Over the next half an hour, you'll hear about BES recording, conservation and outreach projects that are taking place across Britain and how you can get involved in 2023. Information and guidance on all volunteer opportunities and projects can be found on the BDS website or get in touch with myself, Eleanor Culver, um, if you would like to find out more. In 2022, recorders collected over 7,000 records of dragonflies, um, which were accepted into the BDS database. This data set is fundamental in allowing the BDS and other environmental organisations to make informed decisions when it comes to allocating resources towards species conservation. Something I'll go into a bit more detail on in the next slide. If you're new to recording, um, the BDS's main recording activities involve compiling complete species lists for sites visited between May and September. If possible, we ask that recorders adopt a site, and this involves completing complete lists surveys three times a year between May and September every year. And if you go to the Dragonfly Watch section of the BDS website, you can register the sites which you want to adopt. An example of how the BDS database is currently being used is to review the Odonata Red List for Great Britain. Species are assigned threat categories, including critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable or near threatened. Species with a threat category are then prioritised for conservation action, such as reintroduction projects, research, habitat creation and restoration. This new red list will be published sometime this year. As well as adopt a site, the BDS runs a number of targeted recording projects. Please be aware that the white-legged damselfly investigation project has now finished and a final report will be produced this year, summarising its findings. The Willow Emerald Watch will continue in 2023, looking primarily for adults and egg-laying scars. Numerous new sites produced records in 2022, and range expansion continued. Records came from as far afield as Newcastle upon Tyne in the north, Burnley and Crewe in the northwest, and especially Worcestershire in the west, and also Christchurch and Trowbridge in the southwest. The Migrant Dragonflies project continues to monitor the arrival and breeding activity of migrant species such as the Lesser Emperor, shown on the slide. In 2022, records came from over 80 sites for this species, as far north as Murray and Scotland, and sites of overpositing pe sightings of overpositing pairs were widespread. There was also a record of overpositing in Maya Loch in the Scottish borders, which is only the second ever recorded attempted breeding for Scotland. The BDS offers opportunities for BDS members to follow their own interests with regards to recording and research. We can offer small grants to cover the costs and we can also offer the opportunity to have research published in the BDS journal. If you'd like to find out more about the grant and the application process, please contact Pam Taylor or if you want to find out more about the journal, please drop Peter Mill an email who's the journal editor. If you go to the Get Involved section of the BDS website, you'll find a variety of downloadable resources, including recording and monitoring advice and habitat management advice. There's also a selection of educational activities and craft activities for children. Or you can drop me an email or get in touch over the phone if you'd like us to post you about a selection of BDS leaflets or any of the resources available online. Thanks for listening. Hi, this is Andrea, just with a brief update on some of the things that have been happening in Scotland since we presented at the autumn meeting. 
The Northern Damselfly project has been carrying on, although the funding phase has finished, there were some works that we wanted to finish off and also some um, getting volunteers involved in the project going forward. So we've got new two new ponds that have gone in at Inch Village. The um, pond on the left hand side is one that was put in on some community owned land and the pond on the right side uh, was a private landowner who was keen to have a pond on his land uh, and the village are really, really pleased with the result um, and you can see from the drone footage that um, the ponds were filling up nicely overnight uh, with water on their own. We've also been back to Reeton Farm up in Deeside, which is one of the Northwoods Rewilding Network partners, to return back to the mill pond, which when we last visited didn't have any water in it at all. It was just a lot of brown sludge and was completely uh, just over, over, just filled in basically with the willows. So you can see the photo on the left there. We've just opened up the pond a bit with uh, by taking some of these willows out with a chainsaw. And um, you can see that it's opened it up lots. There's still some willows left, but we've kept them there because the water now is too deep. Uh, and the reason for that is because of what's happened at the right a few days before we got there. This is just a short video. So it starts at the mill pond. And then you can see there's this huge pond that's been created and it leads on to a network of further ponds. Now this was work done by McGowan's Environmental Engineering who donated £7,000 worth of their time to the farm. And this is exactly what Mark wanted. There was just a canalised burn there which went to the old mill house and he was desperate to, 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 to do something with it basically. And the end result has just been fantastic for for us and for dragonflies because they've just created this network of interconnected ponds all of varying um, depths as well and they were due to go back for a couple of days after we went so there's, there's still some more work to go on just to sort of tidying them up um, but it's created some fantastic dragon potential dragonfly habitat coming off that mill pond that we cleared up so what you know the result here is just been more than we could have imagined and although it's sort of out with the funding we were given for the northern damselfly project it very much complements it in november we had a fabulous two days um, doing some larvae sampling in abernethy forest so on rspb owned uh, land within the reserve there and very much aided by the rspb um, as these were ponds that and pools that we have never surveyed before um, they're quite a, a way down in the forest um, away from the forest tracks which would take a long time to walk into um, but they very kindly ferried us, us, us around in the 4x4s to get us to the areas of the forest where we wanted to survey and really pleased that we attracted some new volunteers to come and help us who have, have not volunteered for the BDS before, didn't know that much about us but just saw the call that went out and were really keen to come along. So we had about eight people on each day and did two full days. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't find any northern damselfly larvae, but we did find some white-faced data larvae, which was quite exciting. Um, and as you can see, it was lovely just seeing the, the highland cattle that are in there, just curiously watching what we were up to. The volunteer project is still sort of rattling along. Um, I won't say too much, but we're continuing to work with Mindspace and a group that they're working with um, in Perth College. And I presented to them this week, which was fantastic. They were really enthusiastic um, and it, it, it was a very fun, fun talk. Lots of questions, lots of laughter. Um, we've now got an online volunteer application form that we would ask everyone to fill in, whether you're an existing volunteer or a potential new volunteer. We just need to capture all that data. So that would be fantastic if people can go to that and there should be a link to the, the, the form in some of the breaks. And we're working on sort of the policy and procedures around volunteering for the BDS, which is a requirement of our funder. And finally, we're just um, confirming all the details of our Scotland conference coming up next month. And we have quite a few speakers lined up already. 
Uh, we're hoping to make this a hybrid event so that for people who can't um, come up to Perth then they can join us online. Um, we're going to have a presentation from James Nairn at the Northwoods Rewilding Network as we're currently working with quite a few of their partners. So he'll tell us a little bit about the network. We've got Stephen Corcoran's going to tell us about his exploits in Finland last year. And also we've invited back Nicole de Gruber, who is about to embark on a project looking at the effects of dogs and ponds. Um, and that's it from me until next time. I'm Danielle, the Scottish Conservation Officer, with a quick update of what I've been working on over the past few months. With my work with key sites and rare species, there were two main, two main developments last year, and I did speak about them a bit at the autumn meeting. Firstly, the digging of the new Azure Hawker Pools at Carrara Estate, um, which Pat and I visited last week to meet Sarah Watts, who's the Estates Conservation Officer, and Norman Campbell, who has done quite a lot of the peatland restoration there. Um, so he'll be carrying out the work in a few weeks' time. That's happening towards the end of March. So although Pat did a bit of guddling, we didn't find any Azure Hawker larvae this time, but we did get a few common hawker, which was quite exciting as this was my first of the year, this one here. So I talked about this a bit in November. The surveys uh, for Azure Hawker and other rare peatland species in the Highlands found 90% of habitat had dried up with no surviving invertebrates last summer. So we're trialling new pool designs at Karawa of different sizes, different shapes, different depths to see how dragonflies colonise them with particular reference to azure hawker and white-faced darter. Using the design for white-faced darter pools that's been successful in Cumbria and we hope that we'll be able to use the knowledge gained here to, um, to put to good use in other azure hawker and white-faced darter sites. We had a beautiful sunny day last week um, to go over the locations and designs with Sarah and Norman. Uh, there was a dusting of snow on the hills, as you can see in this picture on the right hand side here. Some of the pools were frozen and we were very grateful for the sunshine. So Pat was out with her colander um, and this is a picture of the drowned kitten sphagnum on the left hand side that's found in the pools that Azure Hawkers prefer. Um, its scientific name is Sphagnum cuspidatum and it's also known as feathery bog moss. A lot of peatland restoration has been carried out at Carrara over the past few years and the pools that have developed look like they'll be excellent for dragonflies. Pat and I had a meeting with Forestry and Land Scotland's GIS officer to see the potential of their system in dragonfly conservation. And it looks, it looks really useful. Um, it's possible to put, for example, a 20 metre buffer zone around good dragonfly lochs or, or, or mires, for example, or bogs. Um, and then also the connecting habitat so they'll know not to plant in those areas, for example. So we're just at the start of our work with FLS, but you can see from this map of rare species within FLS boundaries, how many excellent sites there are. And phase two of the Tayside Ponds project started in December. This is a sort of partnership project between the BDS, Tayside Amphibian and Reptile Group, and Perth and Kinross uh, Council, Tayside Biodiversity Partnership. So it's great to get all these organisations together who've got a similar aim. Um, so yeah, the, the phase two started with a pond management day on the North Inch in Perth. Um, we've since run a couple more to improve suds ponds for wildlife. Um, and also have a few more coming up that anybody who, who lives in Persia would be more than welcome to, to join in. 
So this is the date, the dates of the pond uh, management days. We've got um, one coming up this week in Blair Gary, which is fully booked. Um, another one in Blair Gary on the 17th of March. And one on the western edge of Perth at Hunting Tower on the 25th. And then one in Gilton on the 31st. So anyone is welcome, very welcome to come along to those. Just get in touch with me. Danielle.muir at british-dragonflies.org.uk um, I'll be working closely with FLS staff this year and visiting the various offices to carry out training, go out on site visits, um, do some practical training as well and offer management advice. And I'm just getting in the diary a number of training courses for new key site staff um, and volunteers. Um, so we've got a busy year ahead and quite an exciting year. Thanks for listening. Hello everyone, I'm Lauren, the Conservation Outreach Officer. Having started in August last year, I've had a busy and exciting autumn and winter settling in and planning lots of brilliant things for 2023. I've received such a warm welcome from everyone here at Team Dragonfly and I'm really looking forward to my first Dragonfly season. The winter has been filled with planning, some of which I'll be able to reveal in this update. And I've also taken on the job of editing Dragonfly News magazine, which has kept me busy, as well as managing our social media accounts. We really love seeing all of your brilliant Dragonfly images. So as the season gets started, please do continue to tag us in all of your social media posts. This year is a big year for the British Dragonfly Society. Founded in April 1983, this year we are celebrating 40 years of dragonfly conservation. With our growing team of staff and volunteers and our increasing list of brilliant dragonfly hotspots, we have so much to celebrate. Help us to celebrate this year by joining us at one of our events and field meetings. Or if you want to represent us at an event local to you, please get in touch and we can provide you with all the resources you need. We will be celebrating this brilliant milestone throughout the year, keeping you updated via social media, e-news and the website. There will also be a special piece in the Autumn Dragonfly News magazine and we would love to hear from you. If you would like to be featured in the magazine's anniversary article, then please send us your BDS and Dragonfly memories. Pondwatch will be returning this June to celebrate the joy of ponds and how brilliant they can be for dragonflies and lots of other wildlife. Planning is currently underway and we will be adding details to our website when we have all of our activities for Pondwatch organised. As always, this event will be celebrating pond creation and everything that lives and uses ponds in our gardens and green spaces. So if you're creating a pond this year or you've created a pond very recently, please do share your story with us to help inspire others to create their own ponds. The weekend will be full of great online content, resources, hopefully some of your stories as well as in-person events. This year, we will be celebrating Dragonfly Week from the 1st to the 9th of July. This week will be jam-packed with events at hotspots and beyond. If you're close to one of our Dragonfly hotspots, they are well worth a visit during Dragonfly Week. Exbury Gardens, Paxton Pitts Nature Reserve and Wisby Nature Reserve, to name but a few, will be hosting events to celebrate dragonflies with guided walks and lots of activities. But it's not just Dragonfly Week, we will be at events celebrating dragonflies throughout the summer. These include Leeds Bird Fair at Rodley Nature Reserve, Global Bird Fair, guided walks and pond dipping at Langos Lake, and a family fun day in late July at Steart Marshes. 
All of these events with our details and dates will be added to our website very soon and we really hope to see you at one of these events this summer. At Stover Country Park Dragonfly Hotspot in Devon, there is a lot going on this year. Funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund, the Restoring Stover Park project is working with multiple partners to restore and expand the park, improving the facilities as well as habitat restoration. Part of the project will be to monitor dragonflies on site. Dragonfly expert Dave Smallsher is leading the training program and we are looking for 12 volunteers aged 16 to 25 to receive training in Dragonfly ID and monitoring between May and September. Volunteers will need to be in close proximity to Stover Country Park and all volunteers will receive a welcome pack, access to lots of equipment, travel expenses and a year's BDS membership. For more information and to apply for this exciting opportunity, please see the email address on the screen. This summer, we are really excited to be working with new partners to celebrate dragonflies in some new locations. This summer, we'll see the launch of two new dragonfly hotspots, Pans Hanger Park and Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust London Wetland Centre. Pans Hanger Park is in the Mimram Valley in Hertfordshire. It's owned by Tarmac and managed in partnership with Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust. Previously quarried, a large part of the site is now open as a nature reserve and country park. The network of lakes provide habitat for a diverse range of dragonflies and damselflies and the planning for the launch is underway. The date for this celebration will be released very soon. On Sunday the 9th of July, during Dragonfly Week, we will be launching the hotspot at WWT London Wetland Centre. The centre brings 105 acres of countryside into urban London situated in the London borough of Richmond upon Thames. Although close to the heart of the capital, it's a haven for both wildlife and people. With six hides, visitor centre and a huge diversity of birds, it's well known as a bird as paradise, but this incredible mosaic of wetland is also home to a rich diversity of insect life with 26 species of dragonfly and damselfly. Make sure to subscribe to our e-news to be the first to know about the event details for this amazing pair of hotspot launches. Don't forget to follow us on social media. With so much going on this year, this is a really great way to keep up to date with our events and activities. Do tag us in your dragonfly photos and let us know what you're up to this dragonfly season. Hello everybody. So I was born and live in Stoke-on-Trent, which is also known as the Potteries. You might see a little cutout of a bottle oven there, which are all over the city still. But I tend to spend most of my weekends in our blue camper van there, although it's a little bit too chilly this weekend. And we spend most of our time walking with our little dog named Pam Sandwich. So these are a couple of photos of me swimming and the reason that they're here is because the swimming was my real first introduction to dragonflies. Uh, we're lucky enough to be able to swim in a reservoir nearby here and we would tend to be there very early in the morning and we started noticing the dragonflies and were just completely enchanted by how beautiful they were and we started to try and identify them and um, keep an eye out for them more closely and that was my first real kind of introduction to dragonflies.
although my background is not in conservation, um, my previous experience is with working for charities of kind of a similar size and set up and my role previous to this was working for the charity Adopt a Potter who is a charity that provides bursaries for apprentice potters and they also have the Clay College here in Stoke which is a full-time purely practical skills based course for 14 students every two years and my role there was kind of a similar role to this uh, kind of providing general operational support it was an incredibly varied role because uh, there was also a gallery on site that I managed and uh, so people would be visiting all the time and I was also responsible for uh, monitoring the finances. We would uh, have events throughout the year that I would organise. I would also be helping with the marketing so that would be writing newsletters and updating the social media as well as updating the website and kind of maintaining that side of things and then I would just generally be there to help with any administration that needed and just operational support so that could have been really anything if uh, people from the course needed something or from evening classes so it was a very varied role that has given me a really broad oversight into kind of uh, how it is working in kind of a small charity where everybody is kind of all hands on deck which uh, so far that's kind of how it's been and it's been a brilliant team at BDS and I'm so pleased to be working with them. Another thing that I hope will benefit BDS is my degree is in illustration. I studied at Cardiff Metropolitan School of Art and my work tends to be quite graphic. I tend to lean towards more printmaking techniques, so screen printing, lino print, as well as lots of paper cut that sometimes I edit digitally afterwards. So hopefully uh, we can put my skills to good use and uh, work towards putting together some new ideas and products and designs for the shop, uh, which Hopefully you'll see later this year. So what will I be doing? So my role is going to be mostly focused on membership, finance and just general operational support. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on membership on the next slide. Uh, but for the finance, uh, Brian has been mostly doing that. Uh, up until now so I'll be taking over taking some of the admin load off him and dealing with the finances and then I'll also be here to provide kind of general operational support to the rest of the BDS team uh, in kind of whatever capacity they need so that might be newsletters or putting some of the reports together I think it's going to be a real varied role that is going to evolve over time and I'm just going to be as helpful as I can wherever the society needs it. So I've been kind of slowly working with Lynn to take over uh, the membership responsibilities which I'm sure you'll all know she's been doing a wonderful job of for many years uh, and it seemed like a really good time uh, and a really exciting time for me to come in and kind of take over those responsibilities as I think you all know that we have invested in a new CRM system uh, named Beacon which will really help to organise and store our member and volunteer data better so that we can make better use of it and we can use it in a, in a better way for the society, we can be more interactive with our members and we've got better data on where our members and volunteers are for events and uh, things like that. So it's really exciting. It's a really secure system that's used by many charities and it should hopefully provide uh, some great benefits to BDS.
hopefully that's enough information about me but if you've got any questions then feel free to send me an email to my general email which is jess.slight at britishdragonflies.org.uk or if you've got a membership inquiry you're welcome to email membership at britishdragonflies.org.uk and then quite excitingly we've got a PO box which is opening very soon i don't have the details to give you just yet but as soon as we do we'll let you know so please just hold off uh, posting anything to lynn for the time being so i'm really looking forward to meeting uh, some of you and talking to you and uh, hopefully i'll get to meet some of you over this next dragonfly season and well, that's it from me. So thank you very much. And yeah, hope to meet some of you soon. Bye bye.